city uh, regarding the crime wave. But why wouldn't there be a crime wave? If you pull the funding for the police and then you tell the ones that are out there, you know, you can't do this, 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 and this because of this, of course crime's going to proliferate. Why would it not? It just makes all the sense in the world. Who doesn't it make sense to? The people running our government, <laughs> the mayor, uh, a lot of the people on the council who just cluelessly have passed this recent budget that gives money for all kinds of things like a food truck for homeless people. I mean, the, you look in some of the stuff, and there is nothing at all realistic about what's in that budget. And I don't know if you've read it closely, Rock, but it's nuts. And oh, we've you got, know, a, we've got a frisbee golf you, course You're going to jump right in. Yeah, I'm going to let you go with this, but let's talk a little bit about how you got here. What makes you interested in in being involved in government? Because I know your background's real estate. Absolutely. And just tell me how you got going on this. Well, I mean, my background goes all the way back to when I was in Bristol, Tennessee. You know, I was uh, captain of my football team, wrestling team, track, soccer. Um, <laughs> You know, band, choir, everything. I was involved with everything. You know, I did go to the United States Merchant Marine Academy, Kings Point, New York, uh, really? and I was in the Naval Reserve up there. Um, so I came to Lexington 20 years ago, and I fell in love with this city as soon as I got here because it was warm, loving, um, very inviting for a guy that looks like me. And for those of you who can't see me, I'm a uh, tall, half Pakistani, half Italian guy, so I'm very brown. So in uh, certain parts of the South, when I was in Charleston, South Carolina, I wasn't accepted as well as I was in Lexington. Uh -huh. Lexington's a great city to live in. Yeah. Um, but we didn't have the crime that we had back then. Yeah. So, you know, I, I decided to run for city council because I figured we needed, you know, stronger leadership. You know, we, there were a lot of things that needed changing. Well, we need somebody who will actually talk about what the problem is. What we have over there now is – a cult of personality around the mayor that's there, and she's got these little followers who wouldn't dare say anything negative, and then a whole bunch of other people that just don't talk. I mean, it, it, you, it, you get on there, and I guarantee you with your personality, honey, you'll be an oddball. Mm -hmm. You will stand out. I'll be I'll be just like Richard Maloney probably because he's, he's the oddball out there right he now. He is, but, but – You'll be worse than him. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Can I read uh, your August 12th yes. tweet? Um, maybe you can talk just a little bit about that. You, you, you tweeted, it's the Wild West in downtown Lexington today. Multiple shootings just 100 yards from downtown police station and city hall. We need to wake up. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I own property all over downtown um, throughout the, the north side, the east end. So I've been, I've been a part of this community and seeing the growth that's happened in this community. But it's kind of like if, you, if John Calipari was only allowed to play three players, and that, I don't care if they're the number one, number two, number three players in the country, they're not going to win a national championship because they don't have a full squad on the court. We are 112 police officers short right now. We've got 150 police officers that are eligible for retirement right now, and we're not doing anything about Ouch. it. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah, how scary is that? If these guys all retire and ladies retire, I mean, we're in trouble, you know, and we're not doing anything about it. And we've got people in charge who are sitting there saying, you know, we don't have a problem. You know, the day before the shootings downtown, you know, the mayor was giving her speech about the Breeders' Cup uh, at the Fifth Third Pavilion. What if that had happened the day before? You know, while this big speech and ceremony is going on, what if it happens in at the end of October and November when we have six straight days of two concerts a night in the Fifth Third Pavilion? I want to know what they're doing to do about the homeless population. That I, I just took a picture again of uh, a couple that has set up an entire little uh, community with their golf their golf carts. Listen to me, their shopping carts mm -hmm. on the three hundred block of Main Street. Abs they absolutely. slept there all night. They were there this morning. And they still, I don't know that they, they hadn't moved when I went to lunch today. Well, you, you, you also have a lot of good people like, you know, Ann McBrayer or Ann, Ann Backus, who's uh, leading the uh, Town Branch Park. I mean, 
if we keep going the way we're going, that beautiful park that we're spending millions and millions of dollars on, that's going to be a tent city. You know, yeah, it's going to be right. it's going to be a tent city like they have in Los Angeles and San Francisco that's or right. Portland. It's a good point, and I've known Ann since grade school. Um, let me ask you this: What qualifies you to be a council member? I mean, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you; <laughs> it doesn't take much, judging by the crowd over here. What qualifies you? Let me change the question to be a better than average city council member and average being what's there now. Well, let's, let's compare me just to the person I'm running against. I mean, that's the better than that. Okay. The person I'm running against has a background in ballet. She's a ballerina. Um, me, I have a background, obviously military. I own property all throughout downtown Lexington. I've been mm-hmm. on multiple boards uh, and nonprofit boards where I have given of my time, not been paid to be on work for a nonprofit, which is good work, but I have not done that. I've lead, I've been a leader on these boards. I've been president of these boards. Um, I'm Did pre- you ever take a class in ballet? In ballet, no. But as Willie Galt, that great Tennessee wide receiver, yeah. said. Ballet was what made him the great. Uh, okay, receiver. now wait a minute. In all fairness, she does have. Um, she was a maybe a gym owner in Mexico, had an anthropology background, and did a little bit of fundraising. I, I know this because back uh, Tom did a radio show months ago um, after the you know the passing of the largest budget ever for the city, and he said, "How many people have a business background that are sitting on?" The current council and I did that research for him and of course um, really the only one with serious serious quantifiable you know quantifiable three letter CPA was Fred Brown absolutely um, and then of course uh, you know you've got um, you've got uh, some, some smatterings of other but you know Fred Brown was the CPA absolutely so, so I mean uh, strong business I mean you've got to have people who are business leaders who can look at a budget and say hey this is doesn't not work. right. It does not work. It's not going to work. No. And until we solve some of our main problems, I mean, obviously I'm in construction. So when I build a house, I don't build a million dollar bathroom before I build a strong foundation. Right. So until we put that strong foundation, which is police, fire, EMS, one, affordable housing, two. Yeah. You know, we could have taken the $120 million that we got from the federal government and focused a lot of that money towards affordable housing, you know, uh, Holly Wiedemann, she built the really nice place over on Antique Drive next to my house. It's uh, for it's affordable housing for elderly people. That thing probably costs four million dollars. If we put sixty million towards affordable housing, we have fifteen of those across Lexington, yeah. and we disperse affordable housing across our entire city instead of concentrating it in one area. Here's the problem, in my opinion. Lexington has become too government driven. The private sector has not been allowed to do what it does. All, well, not all, but 65 to 70% of the land in Fayette County is constrained as to its use through things like this urban service boundary, the PDR program. A lot of these farms, they've been, they've taken the money and now they're not really productive because it's like somebody, they sold their farm to get the PDR money. I don't see how, if we keep going the route we're going, we can sustain our tax base, keep being productive as a city, and pay for all the urban services. Something's got to change. I mean, you know, Georgetown fixed its problems for generations to come by allowing Toyota to come there. Now the tax revenues from the Toyota plant, not only the uh, property tax, but all the payroll taxes and the things of people that work there. Georgetown's always going to be in pretty good shape. You know, we have run people like that off. Well, and that's partly because of my father-in-law, who's the mayor of Georgetown and was the mayor that brought Toyota (laughs) to Georgetown. Um, But, you know, if we don't fix this, uh, public safety problem, we're not going to attract the businesses that we need to bring the jobs, that bring the payroll taxes, right. that are going to pay for the services. Our problem was when we got the ARPA, which is the federal money, the $120 million, we 
did all of these fluff projects all over town, and we didn't focus in on the core things that would make our city safe, that would attract other other uh, businesses to bring those jobs, which would bring those payroll taxes, which then we could have paid for those other things. You know, we put the cart before the horse, and it just wasn't right. You can't. Here's the problem with the ARPA thing. It's a one-time deal. It, it, it seems to me that you have got to develop uh, – you got to fix your cash flow problems. The 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 pension fund is always going to be hemorrhaging money cuz it was a bad deal for the taxpayers. The reason there's 150 police officers getting ready to retire is because it's too lucrative for them not to stay on. You work 22 years and you're gone. People are in that thing because of the retirement. The retirement was deal was cut by Sheila Isaacs and uh, the, uh, the and the um, the pension board and and it was an inside deal, and the taxpayer was left out of it. We've screwed ourselves six ways to Sunday because we are under a separate KRS uh, designation as LFUCG. You had people that could run things through the legislature through somebody like Tom Buford down in in uh, Jessamine County who would attach something to a bill special interests have have jacked around with this thing because it doesn't have to play by the same rules as all the other cities we got problems and it's going to have to be fixed i think that the LFUCG was meant to be a good thing but they should have never put it under its own KRS and now it's been screwed with and I mean, when when the pigeons really start coming home to you know what, on this this whole pension thing, nobody talks about it. We got it. We got issues that are way bigger than than than. I hate to say it, but they're bigger than shootings. I mean, yeah. they threaten our financial viability. Well, so they, well, I, you've got people in office that don't have any business background, in my opinion, and. They don't look at things like this is one time money that we got from the federal government. One time, one hundred and twenty. And they're million. spending money like it's. Well, they're spending it on things that have recurring costs. Yeah. Meaning that next year and the next year yeah. and the next year, we're going to have to bring in more money, and we're not. How are we going to bring in that money? That's the question that we as citizens need to ask. Council. When, when do you? When do? When? When is the election? November eighth. Okay. So you're running hard. I mean, do we? Which district? Are, the eleventh. Eleventh district. Where 11th is district. that? 11th District is uh, Metathorpe, out uh, downtown. Lease Town Road. Out, uh, out Leastown Road, out Versailles Road, Alexandria Drive. Go for Distillery it. Distillery District. You got to do it. I mean, you got to. You got you to gotta get this done, man. I mean, I don't know what you're doing, but, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to pretend like I'm being fair to everybody on these things. I mean, if the other lady wants to come in, that's fine. We'll give her, extend her an invitation. You have extended an invitation. Okay. Well, the mayor has ignored us. Uh, we've already She's, had David Clorber. No, I mean, they said they would get back to us. She, they responded. They responded. We, we were giving everybody an opportunity to have No, I mean, they've ignored talk. the opportunity of, of coming on so the far, show. Yes. So, you know, I mean, you're going to have to understand if you want change in this community, you got to be comfortable with being the only voice asking for it because most people, 90% of the people just don't care. They're apathetic. They don't care what happens unless it really affects them. And right yet, they haven't felt it yet. When they start to, it'll be too late. Well, and there are people running for city council that have certain agendas and they're going door to door telling people what they want to hear and not telling them their true agenda. You know, I'm seeing I'm seeing pictures of people online doing things that, I mean, make make me really sick as a guy who you know did serve our country and stuff like that. But um, so, well, like, give me an example. I don't know anything about any of this. Ah, well, there's a, there's a candidate out there who was uh, endorsed by uh, the Herald Leader who had pictures of himself on the uh, Facebook saluting the communist flag. Yeah, I did hear about that. You know, Ooh. I mean, he's uh, got a. Picture with him and Lennon's iron fist on his chest. Yeah, I've I heard mean, about that guy. I mean, and, and this is the guy that got second in votes for city council at large. I mean, do people even know about this? Do people, I mean, this is the direction that we want our city to go? Yeah. 
It's insane. It's crazy. Yeah. We talked about this. Um, you know, I, I think it is interesting when any board I've ever served on, we always look for well, the board holistically looks for gifts and talents of so that they can, you know, proceed forward in the best foot possible. So, you know, we need all the finance. We need X amount of financial people. We need X amount in the legal, uh, you know, the legal uh, entity world. We need X amount in marketing, X amount in, you know, so that we can, as a board, be as effective as possible. And it's funny because, you know, election, the city council doesn't, that doesn't, that's not the way it operates, right? Each council person is out there, you know, uh, reaching their their community and trying to reach them with a message that's a bruise point, a, a you know a, a hit point for them and them alone. And so when Tom asked me to look at everybody's background on the city council, you know it is overwhelmingly nonprofit. Um, you know uh, philosophy. I didn't, I didn't ask you to do that. You did that on your own. Okay, so I did. Um, <laughs> Yeah, don't be blaming me. <laughs> well, I mean, I was I was just curious, you know, how many people had a finance background? If if the if the complaint was that it seemed reckless in spending, you know, uh, like a drunken sailor spending, what you know, it all it all looks good, it all kumbaya makes everybody feel good, but you know, is it the they, best? They had thing a budget. For- I, I heard one of the, a well known city council member. She's out there she's running for state senate she said oh we went through this process what they did was they went around to these departments and they said how much money do you need to spend she said we all worked real hard on the budget and then there was nobody there that was a number cruncher that said you can have this you can't have that the person that did got shut down there was there was because and so for this lady uh who's been on this show before to go out and say oh we worked so hard on the budget just it's like tell me how much you want to spend and we'll give it to you absolutely yeah it's 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 stupid go for this you you got you got well, you know you got to make this happen the, you know the other thing is and this is something that uh, really caught me off guard because i wanted to know the true financials i wanted to know what the city councilman and women were spending our money on. So I had an open records request done that I took all of their spending habits of every city council person who's currently on council all the way back to 2018. And you know what I found? I found people who are spending money on their own private stuff. People buying their own lunches, people buying their own uh, cell phone cases and cell phone uh, accessories, spending public dollars on private items, which you are not allowed to do. And so if we've and got people, nobody looking at and nobody's us. looking at it, nobody, you know, nobody in the media is out there doing any of these open records requests, looking at the fact that these people are spending our money on their own private stuff and that they're the ones who are running an almost half a billion dollar budget, you know. It's an eighteen percent increase from current year's budget, largest ever, ever. Yeah, it's it's insane. I With mean, only two so, no I mean, votes I'm, at the I end. I can't help you much, but I'm I'm showing you to my listeners. So, you know, let's. Uh, all right, here's the music. Crank it so up. So, Rock Daniels, uh, running for councilman, candidate for city council, District 11. You can you can Turn always find us on uh, campaign for Rock Daniels on Facebook. Uh, we're on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. We're we're all over. So, click that like button. Follow Rock us. Rock Daniels. We've Benji- got some great Benjamin Rock Daniels. Benjamin Rock. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, here's the Dolly Parton version. Rock, See, I, I thought Rock you went to UT. This is this is to a bunch they, of UT graduates. Uh, they found out I could read real good and wore shoes. They said you got to get out. <laughs> so, um, you talk about somebody who's smart, Dolly. She must, I bet she's a billionaire. Look, look, look at all the stuff she's developed, what she's done there in Pigeon Forge. Oh, absolutely. It's unbelievable. Oh, you see the stuff she's doing for kids in the books? It's unbelievable. Really a great place. Thanks for joining us for the Tom Dupree Show. Stay with us. We got the finance guys coming next hour. We'll be back.